So thank you very much for the invitation. So we are two here. So my name is Thomas Abancourt and Bryce is directly on the chat monitoring. So as you want, if you prefer, if you have it. No, I'm stupid. You are all <laughs> you are all present, so no question in the chat. So we can have some a little bit of question at the end. Uh, so yeah, my name is Thomas Bryce. Is here too. Uh, this work has been being on collaboration with Solomon and Aurelio, who are two. Solomon is a postdoc working with us, and Aurelio is a summer student. So it's a, a little small team that work on this thing. And as Mathieu said, we are from Argonne National Lab with a HPC center in the US. So our discussion will be ready on user, sp user space tracing and really like big HPC application. And we'll discuss a little bit of programmatic. So thank you very much for the talk and let's get started. A little bit of context explaining user because maybe we are not the traditional user or trace or something like that. So. So we work in, in HPC applications, so high performance computing, and those code are highly parallel. They run on multiple thousand of nodes. And now the big trend for the last past year has been to use GPUs, to use accelerator. So how it's work is like a lot of programming model have been built to be able for HPC application to, to use us GPUs and everything. So we saw really an explosion of programming model and of language to be able to target those target those accelerator. So for example, of language, I have we have Fortran. Yeah, we know for a lot of people in the audience, it seems weird, but we still use Fortran. C, C++, Python. We use different programming models. So our main thing is MPI, is to be able to use multiple processes. OpenMP, that you are maybe familiar, I think OpenMP is more famous, is to handle multiple thread. So MPI is for the multiple node and OpenMP are inside the application. Then to target the GPU, we need to use different uh, programming model who are like bound to one particular vendor. So CUDA, if you want to target NVIDIA GPU, level zero, if you want to target Intel GPUs, ROCM, so all the heap HSA stuff. If you want to do AMD, OpenCL with portable, with maybe built on top of this guy. And after you have higher level who are using those kind of maybe under the hoods of programming model, for example, SQL, Cocos, Raja, and everything. Then you have other language. Then you have library who are using those language. And so you see, start thinking this really hard, I mean, multi-layer, multi-fashion prog um, layer of uh, programming model and with hard to, hard to analyze for user because now a user need to profile, understand this code where you have different type of programming model, different language, even in the same code, it starts being difficult. So now the, the, the problem is like, it is really a layer of stuff. So you have SQL, for example, with this high level C++ API, we can use, for example, level zero to on Intel, but for example, heap on AMD. Then you have OpenMP with also using CUDA. You have maybe OpenCL with using CUDA too. So you can have heap, OpenCL, CUDA, and you have a lot of this kind of nested programming model everywhere. And the big question is, how how can you understand that right this, this, we have this problem of really layer and layer of programming model that started with the, on gpu it was easier but now we are start moving to accelerator so we have this layer of abstraction and we need to understand something about those application so our big analysis for us is we want to analyze application based on those models those models are kind of nice boundary between between different uh, stack of the of the stuff of the software, so we really want to understand the application at the high level using those kind of boundary. I think it's a nice abstraction to use. Our main focus is to go kind of fast, so we want to understand performances. Where is the bottleneck? Is the bottleneck is this programming model, or maybe lower in the stack, higher in the stack? Because at the application, you don't know if you are as an application doing something stupid and then you need to fix your application or it is a bug really deep inside the software stack and somebody else needs to fix a bug so for us we work 
at Targon, mostly on Aurora, who is an Intel supercomputer. And our day-to-day -day job is really to understand if we need to bother Intel so they can fix bug on the runtime, or it is our application who do something bad. So this is, a, at least for me, my particular interest. We need to understand interaction between yeah, all these layers, so application, compiler, runtime, hardware, and everything. And we want really, our goal is really to be to give feedback for application developers so they can optimize everything. Some questions that we use to, to solve thanks to, to, to these tracings are how, for example, in OpenMP, this particular feature are implemented, how they handle asynchronicity in OpenMP. Uh, it's really dependent on which version of OpenMP by which library, which vendor, on which hardware. And we want to understand this kind of thing to be able to improve the runtimes. And also at the highest level, those people using, for example, I don't know, Python or this kind of thing where memory allocation are really not something you control manually. It's really automatic. And they have this question, okay, do, how much memory do I use? Because I have absolutely no clue. So this thing, or how many memory I transfer between GPUs and this kind of thing. So we want to be able to solve this really high level question. <clears throat> so our solution for all this problem is tracing. We will just trace everything. We trace as many programming models as possible. So this is what we'll do. Uh, and we try also maybe with something really important to us to capture as much context as possible. So we'll dump all the arguments of any of all the programming model. And we want to be lightweight too, because as discussed before, we don't want to perturb too much the HP application. So we want to be a little. And also, so now that we do the tracing, as we say, we want to influence application people. So we need to develop tools to be able to analyze those trace. So some big summary, some nice timeline, or some other tool. We really want to, we are only mostly two people. <laughs> so we really want to have a modular code architecture to be able to maintain it pretty easily. So we want to, for example, if we need to implement a new programming model, we want to do it with the less pain as possible. Those programming models have I don't know how many could I have called, but it is a few hundred, maybe thousand calls. So we need to be careful to be able to, to do that without too much pain to maintain. And the solution needs to be, of course, efficient, robust, and scalable, but maybe not at the same time. We will not ask uh, the impossible, but it's nice that indeed we can choose for different use cases which one are the most important for us. Here we put a little bit of our scale, what we are interesting. So millionth of event per second per node. We want to scale to 10,060, 24 node. This is the size of our system. So this is what we target. And some application run for hour. So we want to do this kind of things. So this is our big uh, our target, this kind of scale. So to be able to, to trace those programming model, all this heterogeneous programming model, because we have the CPU and the GPU and you want to target this accelerator, we, we trace it. And so we develop TAPI, who is uh, exactly tracing heterogeneous API. So what we want to do is really, we want to dump the trace and at the lower, uh, the trace by, her, by herself should have enough information to reconstruct all the programming mobile state. We want to, when we when we debug a performance issue or a runtime issue or a bug, we want to be able with the trace to have as much information as possible. And then we will uh, analyze the trace to be able to do something. For example, we can generate flame graph, as we say, we can uh, develop some layer of validation layer to be sure that one soft one layer of the stack are using correctly the guy uh, below or the guy at the bottom so they don't do stuff invalid as you know all these programming models have a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, supposition on how you should use them so we can develop layer to validate we are able to find a lot of bug with that and also after this trace should be able to be analyzed and for example some people in our lab also use those trace to be able to reuse them as a simulation to to develop like some simulation what happened if i run on the gpu with twice the memory bandwidth 
what it will change in our application. And because we can, because we trace everything, we can really change that. Or oh, what happens if I add a new GPU? Can I have some multiple speed up? So we can use this trace are really, really useful because they have a lot of context. So a lot of people can use them for a lot of different use cases. <clears throat> As we say, we, 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 what we call like programming motor centric approach. So we want to dump everything. So for example, this is how it looks like. Uh, we save all the argument of the result of each one time entry point. So for example, here we discuss after some CUDA example, here is a level zero example, but for example, we know, so this is the time of course, this is the host name, this is a PID, TID, because we have highly multi-threaded, highly multi-processes. So we dump the VTID, TID, and after at the entry and ex exit of each API call, we dump all the argument. For example, the pointer here for the kernel, and here's the flags. And we have some pretty printing to be able to visualize nicely the flag and not the X value will be painful. And at the end, we have some the result of those guys. So we do that for all of the API code. Uh, should be flexible, as discussed in the previous call. It's nice to not need to trace stuff if you don't need it. Uh, we want to be able to reread them. Uh, we see Python, Ruby, and after uh, also what we want to do is really provide the way of user for developing their own tool if they need to. But us as a, we we develop a few tools to analyze those tries, and I will show them later. And or uh, we want a low reasonable overhead, but yeah, at DTNG for now, I've done as shown in the previous talk, a lot of good work. So for now. Uh, all the problem is for us more to understand how we can tune LTTNG more than LTTNG. So we are really happy with, with that. So we have two big components uh, because we are two people. So we have two components. This is how it works. Uh, one is really the, the handling of the creation of the event. With LT, we are using LTTNG and we we'll, we we'll discuss that but we parse mostly the api header that they provide and from that we are generating the trace point and all the library to be able to call those trace point and then so generation of the the trace point and analysis of the trace point uses bubble trace too so we are split into two pieces and we are support for right now a multiple of api so opencl level 0 CUDA runtime CUDA driver heap OpenMP tool, and we will discuss, but we have plans for other things. So we are really like kind of of the low level for now GPU and OpenMP, we are using them on top of them. So why we choose ATTN, LTTNG to generate the trace point is because yeah, it's well maintained for a long time. It's established. They have a binary format. So this is nice because we generate million of event per second. So at some point it will be nice that it is not JSON or something like that. We measure for ourselves 0 0.2 uh, microseconds per trace point because we want to be blocking because in our case, we don't really don't want to lose information because as we say, we want to, to be able to reconstruct all the context of the trace for us, the, the, the trace are really necessary to be able to, to extract some semantic information. So we really need all the events. So we are in blocking mode and we can relax that in some particular use cases, but really in general, we are in blocking. The good thing is in theory, we can use LTTNG relay daemon to set up a stream over the networks because we have multiple nodes. So it will be really nice to deploy at scale. We are not yet here, but it is a plan in the future. As we say, you are a small team. We handle uh, multiple, I don't know in total how many trace points we have, but it's that to be kind of uh, big. So we cannot generate that. We want to automatically uh, generate the LTTNJ trace point because we cannot do that manually. It will be really too hard. So how we do, we trace everything. We develop some intersection library to be this one and, and maybe the key of this part of the talk is like we generatically we automatically generate them from the header from the or the api description for example opencl they are nice they, they provide directly a yaml format 
where, for example, but in CUDA or in HIP or in uh, level zero, it's just a header. So we take the header, we parse them into an intermediate YAML description of the header. Then we combine the YAML with some metadata and some particular trace point if we want to do some more, some profiling and stuff. And from that, we can able to generate a wrapper function and a tracer model. And for the trace model, we'll generate some trace points. I will discuss that quickly in the next slide. So this is how it looks like. So this one is a few device guest. The sound. Sorry, I miss. I click on the wrong. <laughs> so this is good device count. So it's just uh, here. You see the the raw function signature. So it's a, it returns a Q result and it takes a pointer. So from this header, we can generate this API model. So this one is totally automatic. We parse it in Ruby and we generate this YAML with just a header. We need to provide some meta information to say that, for example, count is a in out, it's a out scalar. We need to say that we cannot understand this kind of semantic from the header. So this is only what we need to wrote manually to be able to generate. So from that, we generate all this uh, interception layer. So what we do is we provide some symbol from the outside and us will call the raw crew device count pointer. And you see, we do the entry and after we do, we call the function and we do the exit and we pass the, the correct parameter. And then from the output, we can generate also uh, some pretty printing and everything. And you see, you now we have the entry with the value of the count. With the pointer, you pass an entry. And then at the exit, we show you the value with behind this pointer. So you can see. <coughs> so how we take this model, uh, this raw YAML, we generate this entry exit. And you see here, it's, this is the model we use. And it is kind of really similar to what we'll use later for bubble trace. So we see the preferred display range and the type of this thing. We have some, for example, here, some cast type where Q result is something we need to cast because of course LTTNG doesn't know about Q result, but we say that in an LTTNG is just a sign. And now that we have those data, we can generate the trace point automatically because they are just a one-to-one -one mapping from the tracing model. So this is the first part, the LTTNG generation of event, where we really did try to automate as much as possible. The only thing we need to do is some information that we cannot extract from the header, we, but we can just do that in a YAML format. So it's pretty easy also to maintain because as when they drop a new version of CUDA, we just need to update the meta parameter for the few functions they add. It's not that much of a pain to maintain. We're rewriting everything from the interception layer to the generation of trace point would be hard. So now Babel trace two, we have the trace, we can generate the trace, and now we want to be able to read and analyze the trait. And for that, we use Babel trace two, who is also very efficient, of course. And it is a reference parser for common trace format. And the really thing we like in Babel Trace 2 is like this really plug-in model infrastructure. So what we do is just we generate a lot of different uh, plugins. So we have source filter sync plugins that we put to be able to analyze the trace. The trace. And at high level, it really look, look like this. We have a trace and after we read it and we run the OpenMP, all our plugin model plugin back to back to back to back. And at the end, for example, here we print the tally, really the, the summary of the thing. So tally for the analysis of the trace is really just an aggregation of message. So we have like some filter, multiple filter. In our case, what is interesting is our, our filter are also emitting a lot of messages. So they are not really filtering, they are also emitting message. But we have a few filters who do some analysis and at the end a sync to, for example, tally, pretty print, or to the pipeline. And also what we did, same thing, 
writing all this plugin by hand would have been really a little tedious because now I think we have maybe, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 plugins. So we invest a lot in trying to automatically generate the plugin. And for that, we develop MetaBubble. So same as TracePoint and everything, writing Bubble Trace 2 plugin by hand is kind of tedious, error prone, because it's really easy to make a, must a mistake. For example, you, you flip two fields in your LTT uh, you change whatever two fields, and after in your Bible trace, you didn't do it, so now you are reading the wrong size of the message and everything. You are unpacking the wrong uh, field. It's really hard. The uh, Efficio has developed some Python binding. They are really nice, uh, but they are kind of slow for our use cases. So we want to stick for C and C++. So our main idea is to develop a new program, programming model, kind of, or where we can attach user callbacks to trace event. So our plugin, as we showed before, is just a collection of callback that you execute when you receive an event. And then in this callback, you can do whatever you want. We unpack all the arguments for you. So in those callbacks, you have all the arguments of the, of the event. And then you can also push message in this callback. We, we provide you function to push message. So the idea is really to abstract away all the bubble trace too. And people need, just need to write valid C++, but they don't know anything about all the internal of Bible Trace 2. So we handle all the unpacking, pushing, reading of messages. And it is open source uh, right now. We are in the process of uh, improving the version, and after we'll uh, make it more official in the official Argon repo. So a little uh, example in uh, in MetaBable. So here you see the same function, QDeviceGetCount, the exit one. And what you don't want to do is, for example, to write manually all this extraction because you need to borrow, you need to understand really deeply uh, Babel Trace 2 because you need to understand all this concept of uh, yeah, of payload field, common payload field, how to get a host name. For example, the host name is not in any field. You need to borrow, borrow from entry and all of these kind of things. So you really, really need to be really deeply familiar. And if you change something in your trace point, or in your layer when you push message inside the filter, you need to rechange all this code everywhere and it is really, really tedious. And here we don't show all the state machine that you need to do to handle the read and write and the creation of port and everything. So we abstract everything away of the user. The user really just need to call that. This, this is a, a valid at the bottom here a uh, compilable example to generate a plugin. So with user writes that with a programming model that we showed before, the YAML model. And from the YAML model, we generate all these functions who do the unpacking, extracting, dispatching of callbacks. So user here just name, need to say, okay, I want to create a callback for QDevice get count. We do the extraction for him because we have the model. We know that the exit will get a queue result and a conval. So user can say, okay, whatever. Here we mimic a pretty printing. He say, okay, I will print that. And then it just needs to register this callback. And it registers this callback exit and it passes a function pointer. And now MetaBable will just generate all the plugin related to this guy. And when you will run this plugin, it will call every time you will receive a QDevice get count exit event in your trace, it will be dispatched to these callbacks. <clears throat> so this is really nice. It really helps developing plugin because now we can write plugin pretty fast, pretty easily, and they are really fast. But of course, sometimes you just want to do some uh, prototyping. So for the prototyping, what we did is using, for example, the, the Ruby binding. We developed some Ruby binding because the Python in HPC is kind of, uh, everybody is packaging their own Python inside container and everything. So we don't want to touch Python if we don't need to, because we don't really want, it would be a pain to develop, to deploy, to maintain and everything in our special use cases. So we develop Ruby binding that are public here. If you want to, if you, some people in the audience like Ruby and want to play with them. And now for, I think I have a, I'm already late. So a quick 
it would be fast some just some demo a quick demo for example here uh it's uh you run an application a dot out and you run iprof with just a component of all this uh, bubble trace to an entity ng it's just a shell script to merge everything together for you and here you see some open mp and after some other layer and after some mem copy so you can see that as you can see as an application it makes sense for you and you can see all the pretty painting with the pointer and everything so this is what we call just a trace to be able to see the trace uh, for user yes uh, take your time because we shifted the whole schedule 15 minutes so you still have 15 uh, minutes uh, oh you okay take your time okay oh so perfect so yes yeah, so the trace are really important for us because this is really for bryce and us it's really to understand the runtime to be able to get all the information are really really important for users far less because they don't understand anything about this fortunately because if not it would be go back for any idea of abstraction so for the user what we say is uh, some tally where we just give them some high level summary for each programming model so they can understand if it makes sense or not for example here we have openmp openmp target and here you have the level zero and we put some min max average and this kind of thing and here because we put only one thread one process but you should imagine that yeah we have like hundred of thread hundred of process and something like that because in aurora we have uh, six gpu per node uh each gpu have two ties so people use at least uh, 12 process i mean most of the people use trace process per node and after our cpu have like 100 200 thread so yeah just for one node we have like 200 of thread and maybe 12 uh, processes <coughs> maybe something with really really nice and we can discuss that maybe a little more detail after from some id from collaboration or something like that is to be able to have a nice visualization of your program because the visualization gives you really you can see really bubble in the timeline who is really important for user because bubble are time you waste and so what we do is try to to analyze the trace and to give them for example a nice timeline for example here at the bottom you see what is going on on the cpu side so this one is really a flame graph so for example for this thread you see you have this big open mp region and this open mp open mp region is as we told before layer on top of other programming model so here is just open mpt another extension and after they do really the call to the low le the lowest level that we trace to be able to target from gpu for example here you see here they submit the kernel and after they synchronize on this kernel to be able to wait and you see here on top here's the execution on the gpus and you see here you see some uh, kind of big bubble who is maybe not what you expect maybe what you want is more like here where the bubble seem a little slower and now the question is is this bubble a problem in your code because you didn't submit too much kernel or maybe this bubble is a problem in the runtime because this runtime for example did maybe here take too long to be able to enqueue a memory copy maybe we'd have been able to understand to understand to put it before or something like that so you can do all this analysis with the timeline who is really really useful so the perspective for the future what we want to do is we want to continue tracing more things so we want to trace mpi we want to train hsa we want also to trace maybe the some sql stuff or we want to if people are using for example python we want to be able to trace python so this is greatly what we want to do but we are really really happy for what we were able to accomplish with this one is this tool have been really useful for all our application developer because low overhead and give you this kind of nice summary because i think other people maybe if not you they try to do maybe too much so the overhead kind of increase and the too much option so some users are lost where here as we show here the only thing they need to do is just i their binary and we have 
like Nvidia <coughs> before got NV Prof, it was nice. No, so no, it doesn't exist. It's NVCs and they generate all, almost all the time kind of this kind of big format that after you need to pre process and everything. So here we want really to, to keep it simple. We want to scale. So this is our goal. We are not still yet. So we want to really uh, to do something platform wide that we can use to be able to go really large. So what is the granularity? Do we want to only do a few subset of even minimal? Uh, should we start doing some sampling? We want also to do some, maybe we, we want to do some aggregation after for the post-processing because we have a lot of nodes not using them will be wasteful. So we can maybe do start, start doing some streaming capabilities. What we did right now to be able, as we say before, we generate like lot and lot and lot of uh, events and we cannot just dump it to disk because at the end, if the people just want to have the summary, it's kind of useless to store all the information into disk and after replay it. So we are working with FishOS to, to enable on the fly analysis of the trace. So for now, we are just using the live mode and it worked pretty well, but maybe we can go higher to maybe work on more advanced, more efficient way of doing it. For example, session rotation and non-blocking mode. Maybe we can relax. Maybe we can have multiple type of event, event we can lost, event we should not lost. So we have a lot of uh, improvement to do in this way. As we say, we are working with FishOS to maybe improve the performance for LTTNG Bible Trace for all use cases because it's kind of really the extreme user cases, uh, user space. Uh, so we found uh, some, uh, so for example, the Muxer right now is kind of uh, slow when you have so much stream. Eh? And so we work with for improving this kind of replay because yeah, we have a lot of streams. For the visualization of the trace, I think it's maybe missing a common format because right now a lot of tools re-implement the same logic. For example, Perfecto, Trace Compass, HPC Toolkit. A lot of people have this way of printing stuff on the screen, but it's really, I mean, it's hard to do. Printing is really not an obvious thing to do. So maybe we should, it would be nice as a community if we can agree on an intermediate CTF formats that we can give to multiple tools and those tools can visualize it on the screen. I think it will be really nice. Maybe we just need some kind of interval, right? Where you have the beginning, the end and some parents. And maybe this is just enough to be able in some use cases to be able to just to generate everything. And it will be really nice because as we say before, we are only a small team and we try to re-implement the less thing as possible. And all this graphic, if you want to do it correctly or from scratch are really, really hard. So right now we are using Perfetto, but Perfetto is kind of limited because I think due to WebASM or something like that is only two gigs. So we cannot really print large thing. So we are really looking of being, being able to interface with other tools. We also plan to expand MetaBable for use cases. For example, right now we don't understand like nested struct or something like that because after hard it's hard to be able to pass uh, how do you extract struct and write callback for struct and something like that so maybe we need to have the struct and after metadata it start being complicated fortunately right now we don't we don't need that so we don't do it but it is something in the future and yes it was funded by the exascape project and thank you very much and we are open to take any kind of question i hope it makes sense and you have this big overview of the project so just to recap we're hpc lot of programming model we want to trace all this programming model and because we are a small team we try really to automate most of the gestion of the front end and the back end so this is a is a big thing thank you very much MS for this awesome talk. Is there any question from the audience? You can ask anything <laughs> if you want. Price told, us, told me to not do any advertisement for Aurora and this kind of thing, but if you want, we can discuss that. I do have one comment. Um, 
I don't know the, the number of the slide, but you present um, entry and exit trace points for um, wrappers of some library. Um, uh, yes. Yes, yeah, probably, um, yes, yes, yeah. that, that, that last one. You, you had like the wrapper itself and you have the trace point oh, yeah. and entry exit. Yeah, this one. So um, we actually have at Ificios an internal script that generates entry exit of public API, something similar to what you do. Um, what I would suggest only for the exit there is that if you have exceptions or you have some set jump long jump, you might lose the exit, right? If you do the enter and then you do the call and in the call you get an exception, you will lose uh, the exit trace points. So what we do at Ephesus is that we pass an attribute to a structure, the cleanup attribute from GCC, and basically the cleanup is guaranteed to be called, it's like a a destructor in C++. And so you get the exit trace point event on the exception. And then you can encode some state like, did I actually return from the function or did I get an exception or did I get unwind? The stack has been unwind, you know? So if you really don't want to lose any state in your trace point, I will just suggest to add the clean out attribute to a structure. And then you only uh, allocate that structure on the stack and then it's guaranteed to get the exit trace point as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bright, do you have any comments you want to do? Because we're on the link. This is this part. Also, I was yes, very thanks. impressed by the Meta Babel um, things. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. So, kudos for that. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments uh, from the audience? Questions? All right. Well, thank you, Thomas. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, we have time for a break. Um, let's see. So we start uh, at uh, three o'clock. So we have a little more than 15 minutes uh, for break. Uh, and after that, we will start the on-conference uh, sessions. Uh, during the break, uh, please, if you have uh, topics you want uh, to discuss in breakout group, uh, please note them on the, uh, on the pads uh, over there. Uh, you can also add a little plus uh, if you want to attend to a specific topic. So can, we can kind of size the, the, the size of each group. Uh, so uh, see you in 15 minutes. For the live stream, uh, we will resume uh, near the end of the on-conference session. Uh, and it will be recorded as well uh, for a summary of the on-conference. But uh, the on-conference per se in breakout group will not be uh, live streamed or recorded. Thank you.